Would you like to get better low speed control and performance from your Castle controllers, specifically the Mamba X? Well, today we are going to go over programming of the Mamba X controller in our capper for best low speed control and performance. I'm John Holmes with Holmes Hobbies. Thanks for tuning in. So now we are ready to program. You do, of course, need some equipment to program, which would be some sort of rig that you have your Mamba X or Mamba Micro or other censored castle controller plugged into. You will need a computer for programming and you will need the castle link with a USB cable on it. Now, we could be using the B-Link from Castle. However, I've had mixed results with it. Sometimes it kind of screws up the throttle curves on you and you got to do it a couple more times to get it right. And if you don't have a good internet connection, it doesn't always work properly. So I prefer to use the normal Castle Link. It has been extremely solid for me and never has a problem. When you're using the Castle Link, however, you do need a computer. And I would highly suggest that you add a piece of tape to the camera on your computer so all them bad guys can't see what you're doing. So now we are ready to plug in our castle link. As you can see on the screen, there are two red lights showing USB not connected and device not linked. When we plug this in, we should see that red light come on. All right, first position, second position. We got lucky this time. A lot of times it takes that super imposition the third try. All right, there we go. USB is connected. That is a good sign. If you do have problems with your USB not connecting, try a different port on your computer or try a different cable because sometimes your cable might be bad. Now, when we plug this in, there's uh, a little, little polarity right there. The line is our ground, which is brown with castle. We plug that in the proper way. There we go. And we should see the lights on this turn greenish yellow and also the software boom will tell us that we are connected and it will come to life so what i'm going to do is go back to defaults first and then show you what i do on a controller when i'm setting it up for the first time if you have issues of low speed control not being as good as you'd really like and you haven't reprogrammed your castle controller yet I highly, highly recommend this because we can get a lot more low speed control by putting in some throttle curves on this as opposed to in a radio if you have a fancy radio. So we're just going to go through the first tab, basic tab. Auto LiPo cutoff, 3.2 volts per cell. That's a pretty good setting, honestly. Uh, reverse type. Not only do we want reverse, we want crawler reverse because we are in a crawler. The difference between the two is that crawler reverse has an instantaneous reverse, whereas with the reverse is a double tap reverse. And that's kind of a hassle. If you start to fall back on the rocks, you want that instantaneous BEC voltage. Uh, generally, I will run this at either 6 or 7.5. Let's see what server we have on here. This is an HV500, which runs at normal voltages. So I'm going to run this at 7.5 volts. And it says, oh, you may have some problems doing that. We're not going to have any problems on this radio. But if you do not know the capabilities of your radio, I suggest keeping it six volts. Let's see, let's disable the idle beeps. Let's disable the error beeps. Yes, yes, yes. And we are going to disable the data log full warning beeps. The reason why I do that is just because I want it quiet on the trail, no other reasons. 100% brake, which we will probably never ever use. 100% drag brake, crawler full on and drag brake ramp. This is why I can use 100% drag brake and I don't have to worry about the rig going end over end when I stop too fast. This ramp, which I like a fast ramp or a very fast ramp, will let the rig kind of slow down just a little bit more gradually. It's more controllable, more tractable. All right, those look good. Power, low startup power, high startup power. I kind of hear mixed results from people on which gives them the best startup. I tend to use high startup power. This does not mean that your lowest startup is going to always be high power. It is that the ESC will give you high power if you ask for it. But if you're not asking for it, then it won't give you that really high startup power. This is not the same as say a minimum startup speed. Uh, so I generally like to go with a high startup power. Max power, that is gonna be you know how much throttle in a sense, how much battery voltage that it's gonna give it. 100% max power means 100% full speed. Also 100% uh, of your torque, so 100% on that. Reverse, I like sketchy fast reverses. So 100% on my reverse. Punch control, 
This is good to always add a little bit of punch control. Too much punch control and you will lose a lot of your torque and your instantaneous off the line performance. But a little bit of punch control will keep your rig from browning out. So when you grab a whole bunch of throttle, if you have a very low resistance motor in particular on a brushless motor, you will find that your rig may kind of jitter, brown out and just act funny. Adding 30% punch control will in almost all cases prevent that from happening. So it's just a good idea. Now, if you do all of this programming and you find that you need a little bit more low speed control, this torque limit with a motor test will actually give you better startup in very, very few cases, mostly sensorless cases, but you can use this. If let's say your motor is starting up and then it stops and then it starts and then it stops over and over, that is when you would use this motor torque limit. Uh, I really never have a problems with it, especially since I run sensor on this rig. So we are going to forego that. All right, advanced. Arming time, 1.5 seconds. That's great. Auxiliary wire mode. I am not using the auxiliary wire, so there is none on that mode. Live link enable. I don't use it, so we're going to keep that disabled. That is a way that a fancy radio can talk to your motor speed controller and you can get some feedback on your voltage, your amperage, and some other stuff like that. Throttle dead band. Um, if you are having issues with your ESC arming, sometimes you can open this up. Uh, average 0.1 milliseconds is actually a pretty good area, so we're just going to keep it on that. There's a lot of things that we can just keep without changing on here. Motor direction. I actually know that this is a capper and we need reverse direction, so I'm going to change this to reverse. Motor type. Smart Sense Brushless is by far the best if you're using a censored motor. And what this does is it only uses the sensors for startup, and then as soon as we get to somewhere around uh, about a tenth of the kV or so, it depends on the motor, it switches over to sensorless commutation. Uh, so, you know, somewhere around yeah, 250 RPM, once it gets going, this guy's gonna switch to sensorless. I won't know the difference either way, but this will give us the best performance. If you did censored only, you may have issues with both efficiency and power at full throttle. So this is why I suggest the Smart Sense, because it goes to sensorless operation, which is by far the best for your high speed and efficiency. All right, sensorless motor timing. This is, uh, so we're using a four pole motor. The timing won't actually affect the performance very much, except for if we go too high on our timing, we will start to get very bad efficiency and possibly a lot of heat. Since we are in a rock crawler, the lowest timing is actually gonna be more our most effective since we're only using the timing at our startup. So, well, this is the sensorless motor timing, um, but even, even then, lowest timing I have found works best in a rock crawler. So, that is that. Motor temperature cutoff. I don't have motor temperature sensors, no RTDs in my motors, so it really doesn't matter on here. Um, if you are in a racing situation, it may be useful for rock crawlers. I typically don't even use it anyway, so disabled on the motor temperature cutoff. Data logging. I don't want any logging. I'm going to go ahead and clear the log data. Because it did say that it was full. Now it's empty. But honestly, I don't really care about data logging anymore because I know what everything's going to do. If I wanted to know any certain things, oh, we have to have at least something it looks like. It won't let us not log. Hmm. Oh, well. So we'll just, we'll just do battery voltage. Uh, but in a sense, maybe if I open this up a little bit, it'll show us. No. Yeah, so I don't use it looks like we can't easily disable it maybe it's hiding up in here it looks like they have made some changes to the castle link and maybe didn't give them enough room so that's what it is I don't use the logging very much here is what is probably going to be the biggest change that you notice and this is your throttle curve as it comes stock you can see it's just a straight line from 0 to 100% throttle giving 0 to 100% duty cycle out of the ESC and what I like to do is I can just grab a point on this line and we are in curve mode, as you can see right here, we're in curve mode and we pull this curve down and I like to hold about 70% input throttle to give me about 30 ish percent output throttle. Nice slope to that curve. Very nice slope. Kind of looks like a quarter pipe or a half pipe ramp. Brake curve. We're probably never going to use brake because it's in a rock crawler and our drag brake does the job and software which i probably should have looked at first is if there's any updates available it'll usually prompt if there's an update so 
There we go. And if you would like to save your settings so that you can go back to them later, this last tab, the save print, is what you would do. So you would save current settings to file somewhere, sure, on the desktop. And I'll just label this one X. And there we go. Now we can always reload these settings later if we would like. Last thing is to hit the update button and we wait. Right, program settings, update settings complete. There we are. So that in a nutshell is how you would program your speed controller. Now we have to unplug it from our ESC. We plug our ESC back into the radio, paying attention to polarity, of course. I would next install the radio cover, radio box cover back onto my rig and we are ready to go. So that in a nutshell is how you program any censored castle controller, in particular the Mamba X in this case, for best low speed control and performance in a rock crawler. If you do have any questions about this, feel free to put them down below and I will definitely get to them. So as always, thanks for tuning in and have a good day.